I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about shooting infrared with your phone and the Hoya R72 filter. For your convenience, there's going to be timestamps down below, but it's going to go roughly in this order. First, the common questions about shooting infrared with your phone and your sensors. Second, I'm gonna explain how it actually works. Third, I'm gonna take you with me on a shoot here in South Korea. Fourth, I'm gonna talk about the equipment I used and what I could change. Then we're gonna talk about editing. I'm gonna run you through the entire workflow starting from the DNG converter in Lightroom to channel swapping in Photoshop. Finally, I'm also going to go over how to edit infrared video in Adobe After Effects. It will be a big video. Please use the timestamps if you get bored. First, I'm gonna go over the most common question. Will this ruin my sensor and how does it actually work? Short answer, no, it will not ruin your camera sensor nor your phone sensor. So how does infrared actually work? When a camera sensor is first made, it does not know which colors the human eye sees. It picks up infrared, it picks up ultraviolet, it picks up uh, the visible spectrum. So what camera manufacturers do is they insert a filter in front of the sensor that blocks infrared, x-rays, ultraviolet, and it only allows visible light, the colors that we see. However, this filter is not perfect. Let's say it blocks 99% of the infrared light, but that 1% still gets through. You just don't see it because it's covered up by the visible light that we're familiar with. Now, what the Hoya R72 filter does, as you can see, it's pitch black. It blocks all visible light and it only lets in infrared light. So you put this in front of your camera sensor and let's say your sensor can only pick up 1% infrared light. If you do a long exposure, which is what people normally do with uh, DSLR mirrorless cameras, eventually you build up enough infrared light to create an image in infrared, all while blocking the visible spectrum. Now, with a phone camera, I cannot really control the exposure times. So you do get a noisier image because the camera increases the ISO. However, you can get infrared pictures and that's what this video is all about. Before I forget, if you're using your phone, be sure to shoot RAW. Now I know Apple doesn't allow you to natively shoot RAW, you need to use a separate app. In my case, I'm using the Pro Camera app, but it doesn't matter. Just use any app that lets you shoot RAW because you are going to squeeze as much information out of this files as possible. Another common question, do you need to set the white balance for your photos? The answer is no, if you're shooting RAW. If you are shooting JPEG, it does matter. So you want to take the white balance off the foliage or the sidewalk or a road. However, if you're going to be shooting infrared video, it is important to get the file as cool as possible because you do not have that much editing potential when you go to After Effects, which is what I did. I cooled the file as much as I could for my video and you'll see the results later. So let me take you on a shoot. Now I do have an infrared drone. That is an entirely different video, but you are looking at clips here that were shot with a full spectrum drone in different wavelengths. Now, if you care about infrared and full spectrum, I have a complete guide going over that, but that video is really long and not for this video in particular. I took pictures with my iPhone 14 Pro. I have an older video right here that you can watch. However, back then I had the issues of light leaks, which is something I'm going to talk about in the equipment section. But as you can see here, I was able to get some pretty nice photos with the Hoya R72 filter and the iPhone combo in South Korea. Now the infrared aesthetic is something that you either love it or you hate it or you just want to play around with. And for people that don't have a proper camera and they only have a smartphone, you can probably afford one of these Hoya R72 filters and there's many different brands out there. So it's really whichever one you want. Now it's good to keep in mind that when you shoot the Hoya R72 filter, you're not gonna get a whole lot of color because this is the 720 nanometer range. There's not too much color. If you want the super colorful pictures, you have to shoot with a 590 nanometer filter. But 
Those only work on full spectrum cameras, as I explained in the full spectrum video. So don't even think about it. You can only use the Hoya R72 on your DSLR or your phone or mirrorless. Now we get to talk about the part that you probably want to listen to, the equipment. I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro and I'm using the Moment case. Now I'm not an advocate for Moment. I only bought Moment for a particular reason. However, in my previous video about shooting infrared in the phone, back then I suffered a lot from light leaks. After much research online, I found that Moment cases come with a clip-on lens filter adapter. It looks something like this and it conveniently clips to your phone in this manner, which is exactly what I needed. However, what I didn't anticipate was that for something so simple, not many phone case manufacturers actually do this. For the iPhone 14 Pro, which is what I have, the only case manufacturer that does this kind of clip-on filter that has zero light leaks, which is very important, are the Moment cases. Now, newer also has a filter adapter just like this, and it's like one third the price. The problem is they only have it for the iPhone 15 and 16. Android, I'm not sure, you're going to have to look. But it's very important for infrared to prevent as many light leaks as possible. I also experimented with the JJC uh, magnetic clip-on filter adapter. The problem with that, of course, is that there is a lot of light leaking. It would be great for an ND filter, but not for infrared photography on the phone. So the equipment I used, the iPhone, the Hoya R72 filter, the Moment filter adapter. And this is important. The filter adapter for Moment cases is 67 millimeters. The Hoya R72 filter that I have is 77. Although there are some 67 millimeter ones, but I did not want to buy a new one. Instead, I bought a step up ring from AliExpress for $3. It steps up from 67 millimeters to 77. So I just filled, screw it on and voila, I have my, my setup. And that is all the equipment I used. Now let's go to the next step, which you're probably waiting for, which is editing. I'm going to teach you how to create a DNG profile in Lightroom. So that in the future, you can edit infrared photos without the hassle. First of all, you may be wondering, what is the point of creating a new camera profile? The reason is because in Lightroom, you cannot go cooler than 2000 and we cannot edit the picture the way we want it to look uh, with this limitation. There is another photo editing program out there that lets you go lower than 2000. I don't know which one it is, but I have seen it. But if you have Lightroom, this is a step you have to complete once and then never again. Let's start from the beginning. When you take a photo with the Hoya R72 filter, whether it be on a camera or on a phone, it's going to look like this and you're not going to be able to cool it anymore. So what you want to do is make sure it's as cool as it gets. We're going to create a DNG file, export. Instead of image format JPEG, you're going to change to DNG. And now we're going to save this on our desktop. So now we have a DNG file that we can use. What you want to do is find this web page from Adobe. Scroll down to resources. Find the DNG profile editor. And yes, it is from September 2012. It has not changed. Then you're going to download for Windows or Mac. Once you have it downloaded, it will look like this. Be sure to open it. This is what the DNG profile editor looks like. So you're going to file, open DNG image. This is the DNG image we just opened. That is cooled down and that is key. So we're going to open that. Now what you want to do is go to color matrices, find the temperature and lower it as far as it goes. Now save this exports as camera profile. Now you can save this wherever you want. In my case, desktop. 
it has been successfully exported. You don't need to save any changes. Make sure you have this labeled. I'm going to label this iPhone Infrared. This is our camera profile. Next step, go to Lightroom. You're going to go to Camera Profiles. You're going to go to Browse. Up here, there should be a little plus sign. It says Import Profiles. Go to Desktop, Infrared Profile that we just made. Now, it will not be here right away. You have to restart Lightroom. So I'm going to close Lightroom. And I'm going to open it one more time. Okay, so I have restarted Adobe Lightroom. And you have to find the profile that you just made. Right now it has iPhone IR, which is the profile I made. Sometimes Adobe bugs out and for some reason doesn't show you the profiles. So what you want to do is uh, go back to the plus, go to manage profiles and make sure it is clicked. Now that you have your uh, new profile for infrared, as you can see here, we're able to cool down our image much more. And here is where the second part of the tutorial takes place because now we can edit the photo in Lightroom. So I'm going to take my white balance and you want to get the white balance from the leaves or any foliage. Now it looks kind of gray, but that's fine. Now we're going to edit this in Adobe Photoshop. So edit in Adobe Photoshop. So I know it looks black and white, but don't worry. Go to Image, Adjustments, Channel Mixer. You're going to find the red channel. You're going to switch red and blue channels. So red is going to be 0. Blue is going to be 100. Now you're going to switch the blue channel with the red and the blue. So red is going to be 100 and blue is going to be 0. There we go. There is not much color. That's because this is the Hoya R72 filter and this is the way they typically end up looking. So we're going to save it because I want to edit this in Lightroom. So what you can do is bring some color back by increasing the vibrance. And that gives you more or less that infrared look that everyone knows and loves. You could push it, although the picture kind of starts to look funky after a while. Although I much prefer to select the sky. And I'm going to bring back just a little bit of color. Just enough. And the next part is to your preference, but if you prefer the foliage to be white, but personally for me, I prefer a tint of pink. So I'm going to make a new brush, just a tad bit of pink. The key is to make it very faint. You don't want to overdo it. And yes, it is normal for your picture to look kind of noisy because with infrared, you're doing a much longer exposure than usual. So you're going to be introducing uh, all kinds of noise. Now this picture will look much better on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, but I actually shot this on an iPhone. So that's why the quality is not the greatest, but it works. You can remove color noise as you wish. And uh, yeah, this is your infrared photo shot on a phone after creating a DNG profile. Hopefully someone finds this useful. We are now going to edit infrared video. Now I shot this with the iPhone. I tried to get the white balance as cool as I could before recording. And that's important because you do not have that much flexibility with video. So first thing we're going to do is find the channel mixer. Drag it on there. You're going to change the red red to zero and the red blue to 100. And you're going to go down to blue red, change it to 100. And blue blue goes to zero. So exactly the same thing you were doing in Photoshop, but in After Effects. Now we're going to find Lumetri color. 
you go, Dumetri, drag it on there, and uh, I'm going to take the white balance off the grass, but really you can take it off the pavement too if you want. But yes, this is what infrared video looks like, let me play it. And really it's kind of subjective the way you want it to look. This is by all means not a rule that you have to do like this, but this is the general workflow that most people go through. You can even play around with it, go to the curves, see what it looks like if you throw some blue in the shadows or red. Or It's all up to you.